Hey everyone, Doug from Convology here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a holiday promotion page. Actually, I have two of them, one for Halloween and one for Christmas uh, for an e-commerce business using WooCommerce or Thrive Architect. These pages feature product lists, filtered products by various tags and categories. They include add to cart buttons, some of them pretty tricky actually, linking to product variations, and overall are a great way to boost your sales in this coming season. Oh, and the best part, they're super easy to build when you use the right tools. So stick around and let's take a look at how these are built and I'll show you how to do one for yourself. Now before we dive in and actually start building this, I just want to quickly go over a couple of things. This is built using WooCommerce, which is what's powering the WordPress-based e-commerce platform, and Thrive Architect, which is a page builder and overall part of a large suite of tools that help online businesses and digital entrepreneurs make really cool things and effectively help their business perform better online. On this particular site, this is my wife's uh, sheet music website. She sells uh, sheet music, music theory resources, and stuff like that. So she's been gracious enough to let me use this as the guinea pig. For the past couple of years, we've been building these terrific promotion pages, or what we kind of call them. Uh, but in a way, I guess they could be uh, considered silo pages. If you're familiar with silo pages, uh, it's essentially where you take various topics and create a page all about those topics, often blog categories, and you feature different aspects of that category or different subtopics or tags within that category. So that's kind of what we've done here. So on this promotion page, uh, essentially she has the top Halloween picks, which are her most popular pieces that uh, her customers tend to buy. So she's featured those at the forefront, right? It's basically the pieces that are gonna sell no matter what, might as well put them front and center. And then she features a link to all of the Halloween sheet music. And if we open that in a new tab, uh, you can see it takes you right into uh, her store where she just has tons and tons of Halloween sheet music. We also have the color by note section. This is a pretty popular thing, uh, music teachers, because she's a piano teacher as well. So she creates lots of resources and sells them here on her website for other teachers to uh, purchase and be able to use those too. Well, these are really popular. So she features an entire section here with these color by note printables. And because they're so popular, uh, she not only has uh, view details, which takes you to the product page, but she also has an add to cart button. So when this button is clicked, it automatically adds the product to the cart and takes you directly to the checkout. I'll show you how to build that as well as a more complicated version using product variations uh, in a few minutes here. Now we also have product lists, uh, essentially you could call them product lists where uh, different products belonging to different categories can be filtered and shown. So for example, uh, these are piano solos that are spooky and fun. She has classical Halloween piano music, music that falls within a particular category that she wanted to showcase and separate, contemporary music. Uh, most of these, I believe she has, uh, she's the composer of some songs she's a, an arranger of. So she filters those out. Uh, she has piano music by level. So she's given products inside of WooCommerce, particular, um, uh, what are they called, like tags, or WooCommerce has a way of adding properties or variables or attributes, I think they're called, to products. And so you can sort by those as well. So she has uh, beginner or elementary level music, uh, intermediate, and then music for more advanced pianists. And then she has a section all about popular Halloween piano sheet music that she has arranged. Piano music from The Haunted Mansion, uh, from Nightmare Before Christmas, and things like that. And what's really great about these product lists that are built with Thrive Architect is that there's pagination, meaning without leaving the page, users can cycle through what's offered and go to page two, three, four, and she can keep them in these like little sections without having to list tons of music and users can browse and shop and click into them to learn more. So let's jump in and take a look at the basics of creating a page like this using Thrive Architect and WooCommerce. And we're going to start with a normal page within the theme itself. You don't have to use Thrive Theme Builder. In fact, my wife uh, actually prefers Cadence, which is a completely separate theme, uh, and Thrive Architect works great with it. So the uh, lesson there is that you can use Thrive Architect and WooCommerce with whatever theme you happen to like. So bouncing back and forth between the pages, uh, this is essentially just a background section where you can add a background image. I'll show you how to do that really quick. We'll expand our element tray and add a background section. And we'll choose here on the left to stretch it to fit the screen width. And then we're going to give it a background style. And if you're not familiar with Thrive Architect, when you click on an element, contextually the left-hand sidebar is where you get 
tools and settings for the element you've chosen. And you can always see what element you've chosen here in the breadcrumbs at the top. So we're going to add a background image to our background section, and we're going to choose our image. And for this one, we're going to choose our Halloween inspired orange background and click apply. Now we want to accomplish this web effect. So we're going to bring in a separate image and we're going to align that to the top. So let's go ahead and add another image and let's grab the spider webs and insert those. And then we're going to tell it to align to the top by using this grid here, the top middle, and then we'll click apply as well. Now we want to add some height to our background section, at least to get started. So under main options, we're going to increase the minimum height here so that we can have more height to our background section. And one of the things you'll notice is that the webs are scaling to fit our background section. So let's go back to our background style, click on our webs here. And instead of cover, let's just choose default or perhaps contain. There we go. That looks even better. And then we'll tell those to align top again and hit apply. Now they'll stay at the top. And if we increase our minimum height of our section, they won't be affected. So that looks really great. Next, let's add a column section to our background and we'll make that two columns to accomplish the same effect. And with our background section selected again, let's tell all of the content to align to the center in the vertical position to give our webs a little bit of space. Now what we want to do is add a text element into the left hand column and paste in our text from the page. You can see that it's really hard to read right now. The fonts aren't correct and all of that. So we're going to fix that. For our title, we're going to use a font called Griffey. So we'll highlight that text. We'll go to Google fonts and we'll type in Griffey, which is a Halloween looking theme. So the first thing we'll do is highlight our title section there and we will change it to an H1. And then we're going to change the font to the Halloween font she uses called Griffey. Oops, I think there's two Fs in Griffey and click apply. And that's already looking a little bit better. Uh, when bolded, it can be a little hard to read though. So we'll unbold that. And now what we want to do is probably give our section a little bit more height so that things are a little more readable. That's looking better already. And I think we're going to make this text white like she had it. And there we go. It's already starting to take shape. And she actually added a background shadow to it. So we'll just go ahead and do that as well and click apply. And you can play around with that shadow. If you wanted that shadow to be darker, you could increase the opacity to make it stand out off the page. And it also looks a little more Halloween-y. Um, that looks kind of cool. So maybe we'll just increase the font size of this to about, maybe we'll give our, our column a little more width by dragging it and then increase our size there. All right, that looks great. And last thing we'll do here is just make this text white as well. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea of how we're constructing our hero or featured section of our promotions page. You can add images here in the right hand side. You can add buttons that scroll to various parts of the page or send them off to your offer. Um, but for now, we'll leave the heading section there and we'll move on to adding a section all about product lists. So let's go ahead and add a new background section. I love to add background sections whenever I'm grouping things together. So our hero top section, everything is in one background section. And for our product list, we're going to keep that within its own background section, align things middle, stretch it to fit the screen. So now here's the next the cool thing that you can do. Let's expand out our element tray. And I want to show you something. If you search for WooCommerce, you're going to get a lot of WooCommerce elements. You're going to get uh, product categories and cart widgets and lots of widgets actually, which aren't what we want to use. We're actually going to use something a little bit different. We're going to use the post list because not blog posts, but if you think about WordPress, and if you're not familiar with this aspect, this will be a little bit new to you. So WordPress, basically everything is what's called a post type. Products in WooCommerce are a product post type. Blogs are a blog post type. So we're going to work in post types, but we're going to use products as our, our post type. So let's just choose a simple starting place. We'll choose the image and text option. And under filter posts, we're going to choose instead of posts up here at the top, we're going to instead uncheck that and choose products. And then we're going to save and close. Now you can see it's already changed. So we have uh, different products. We're pretty much pulling from Christmas and Halloween right now, because that's what my wife has most recently published. So we need to go in here and edit this design so that all of these images and text and things are how we want them. So first we'll click this orange button over here to edit the design. And now you'll see there's an orange border around the, the post list. So that means we're editing the design of the post list. 
So on this content box, and that's basically how this template is built, it uses content boxes where the background image is the featured image. So for us, what we're going to do is go to background style, featured image, we're going to choose dynamic, and there we go. Now our dynamic image is going to be the featured image, which is our product image in WooCommerce, and we can choose whether we want to use large, full size. Um, I'm going to choose full size because that's the, the images that are uploaded are relatively quite small. And we'll choose uh, contain, which I think should be totally fine, and click apply. Now what we can do inside of our content boxes, you can see they're a little small. So what I want to do is increase the minimum height. And as you see here, as I drag this, the images are getting bigger and they're fitting nicely. And so I think that looks pretty good. And you can do other things like you can center the text. And then once you center one and you click out of it, it'll apply everything to all the previous ones as well. Now, if you don't like this hover effect, and in this case, it doesn't work so well, I wanna show you another option that you can do instead of using a content box with a background image. So we can actually delete that content box and open our element tray and search for, well, it's right there at the top in this case, but featured image, and then just drag it in above our text. And what that's automatically done is it's created by dynamically referencing the post itself or the product in this case, it's automatically pulled in the correct image for each of the products. So in this case, our particular products are 100% equal. The featured image is the exact same size for every one of our products. So this works better. If your product images are different sizes, you may want to opt for that content box with a background image and play around with it until you find what you like the most. Now for each of our images, we can click on them and we can choose to change the size. Here on the left, we can change this to pixels and we can shrink our images down to something that maybe looks good. Let's choose maybe 300 pixels. Choose the position, let's center those. And that looks good. That's coming together nicely. But maybe instead of having six products, we only want to show three or maybe four in one column. So let's go ahead and click done to edit the visual style edit and go back to post lists and show four columns. That looks good already. And number of items, let's change that down to four. And now we have four products within our post list. Now we had one other feature on that promotion page, which was the ability to filter these lists by not just products, but by product categories and product attributes. So let's again click on our filter posts. And this is where Thrive Architect gives us some amazing, amazing filtering rules that are really, really hard to find anywhere else without really big, expensive plugins. So here we're going to add a rule. And this rule is going to be a product, no, let's see, product, and this is again, not my website, it's my wife, so I'm not super familiar on this, but let's try to add Halloween beginner music. So let's try product level, and that's something that she's created and it has to belong to beginner. Okay, let's add another rule. And you can see how intuitive this is. I didn't practice this ahead of time. I'm just guessing based on how she set up her structure. And let's choose product tags and let's add, you can see here, she's got tons of different tags for music. Let's search for Halloween. Yeah, sure enough, we have Halloween. Yeah, Halloween sheet music looks like a great option. So we're going to filter this list by only beginner Halloween sheet music and looks great, show four. Let's click save and close. And there we go. We now have four beginner songs, but maybe I want to exclude arrangements of popular songs and only do songs that my wife has composed. So I'll hit filter posts again, and I'm going to add one more rule here, and I'm going to choose tags, and I don't want to show, so I want to display beginner, but only Halloween piano sheet music, but exclude I'm going to search for her popular, there it is, popular music arrangements, and click save and close. So there we go. Now we have filtered among hundreds of products. We have filtered it down to show just four from our filter. Now, that's cool, but there's more music here. So instead of just showing four, let's go ahead and add pagination. So let's go back to our edit design and click on our uh, post list again. And within our post list, we want to add pagination. So right here where it says pagination type, we're going to choose numeric. And then you can see here down at the bottom, we've added pagination to our products. And then let's go ahead and click done on that. 
And now we can edit our pagination. So this blue doesn't really fit within the theme of a Halloween page. So let's go to background style on that and make that, I don't know, maybe like a Halloween orange. And there we go. Now, the last thing we have to do is just maybe give this a little bit more room to breathe, increase our minimum height, and then maybe give it a title. So let's bring in some text above our post list and say Halloween beginner uh, piano sheet music. And let's make this maybe an H2 and change the font to something Halloween. Cool. And then hit apply, make it less bold, and I'll maybe make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. We have added a product list. We've applied a display feature, but only a certain type of product within that display feature, and then excluded another display feature to get us the exact list of products that we want. And now it's just a matter of duplicating this however many times we want to, to show different types of products that are perhaps within our overall promotion that fit maybe different product uh, categories, product tags, product features. There's a lot of things you can sort by in WooCommerce, which I showed. Let's look at the next thing, which is an add to cart button. So if we go over to this page, this is another promotion page. We looked at the Halloween one a few minutes ago, but you can see it's generally constructed pretty much the same way. It's a great thing. You can just hit duplicate on the page and then go in and edit however you like. She just swaps images, but we have this add to cart button here. And even more specific on this one right here, we have an add to cart button that adds only a specific variation because this particular color by note collection for all of her Christmas has a US version and a UK version because in the UK they use different terminology for certain music symbols. Let me show you how to create those. Back on our page, let's just go ahead and add a background section again to give us a new place to work within. And we're going to just add a new background section. And let's go ahead and just put in a button. I'm not going to do much to stylize this, maybe other than make this button orange. Uh, and then there we go. So the link you're going to want looks pretty simple here. On the left hand side, and I'll zoom in on this to help you see it, is your domain name slash cart. And then we need to add a question mark and say, add to cart. In fact, this will be even easier. Let me just put it above my button here and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. We'll delete that. So we have our domain name slash cart with a question mark, add dash two dash cart equals, and then this number right here. If you're just adding a single product to your cart, this is the product ID number. Let me show you how to get this. And it's the number that uniquely identifies each of your products. Within the product section of WooCommerce, you'll see that when I hover over a particular product, there's this little ID that appears right next to the edit, the quick edit, the trash, and those types of options. Let's say we wanted to add the color by note Halloween bundle to our cart. The ID for that right here is 644. So I'm going to go back to our promotion page, change that link to 644. Now I'm going to copy that click on my button and replace the link or add the link here under target URL for the button and then save my work and preview it so we can see how this adds the product to our cart. When I click on that, you can see that the Halloween bundle has been added to our cart. Now let's take a look at how we can add a variation of a product to our cart. So if you have a product like this one, where there are different variations. So for example, a United States terms or a UK terms version of a Christmas printable, we need to find the unique product ID that applies only to the United States version. To find the product ID for variation products, it's really simple. You just go into the product itself and go to the WooCommerce section about product data, find variations, and where you've entered in your variations, which you pretty much have already created by now, you just find the product ID right here. So in this case, for the US version, it would be 3288. You enter that into the link and it will add this variation or 3289 would have added this version. So just find your ID for the variation you want to automatically add to cart and that's how that works. All right, so that's really all there is to it. Uh, that's how you create a promotions page using WooCommerce and Thrive Architect. Again, it works with any theme, whether it's Thrive Theme Builder, Cadence, or pretty much anything else you wanna do. Uh, Thrive Architect gives you the product list filtering and the design aspect and WooCommerce powers the backend that you need in order to uh, have the product IDs and the products and the pages themselves, and then how to process the payments. So combining these two things can make you a great promotion page that you can use this holiday season to increase your sales, impress your customers, and improve your online e-commerce business.